Welcome to Sister Talk again. We thank you for joining us um, for another program. Um, we are very excited in being able to come in to present a topic of conversation that my sister Misha really felt led to speak on. And the title, as you can see, of the show is Knowing How to Raise Your Children and the Dangers That Can Arise If You Don't. So I want to start off by saying that, again, we appreciate the feedback that you guys have given us um, during the first show. And if there are any topics of conversation that you would like for us to speak on, please feel free to leave your comments and your suggestions below. And um, we just thank you and will appreciate if you would share these videos if it was a blessing to you. So, Sister Misha, um, I spoke with you yesterday, and you told me that this topic of conversation was really pressing upon you. Can you explain why you feel that the Lord is wanting us to speak on this in this hour? Hey, Amen. I had a dream, and in the dream, I saw myself in the church, and the Lord told me to go forward and to speak to a woman that I saw sitting in the pew. And she just happened to be a single mother who had children. And in my dream, she was consumed with herself. And the Lord was, he was wanting me to speak a message to her that her children's lives are important and that she has to love and protect her children because there are so many things that can come in when a parent can be consumed with themselves. They can kind of not pay attention to their children the way that they're supposed to pay attention. And because of that, so many dangers can come in, you know, that would be harmful to the children. So I felt that the Lord was impressing that upon me again to go ahead and speak about that. Amen. And I know you may mention of, you know, parents not paying attention to their children and, you know, there's so many distractions out here. I mean, when you look at, you know, movies and TV programs and video games, you know, I myself, I have two sons. Um, one is 20 now, and my younger son is just turned 15. And I was always the type of parent where I didn't just um, let my kids just watch anything on TV, even if it was animated, because a lot of these animated cartoons are ridiculous. And you have to be very mindful of what is being um, presented um, in animated form, because they know a lot of parents kind of, you know, uh, trust cartoons to um, occupy their kids, so they can either take care of things around the house or just not really wanting to be um, bothered with the kids. And so I was always one to monitor what my kids watch, whether it was movies or TV shows and even video games. Um, there's just so much that we see today that is, and not just today, but like I said, even when I look at um, my kids growing up, I just wanted to make sure that I was aware of what they were watching because we do have to be very careful um, of, of, you know, the things that are targeting our children. Hey, Amen. I completely agree with that. And I, I think you touched on something very important because you do see a lot of that going on today where parents are more apt to be, get comfortable because their children are in the house and they do see them and they do know what they're doing. So yeah, they're more apt to allow them to sit in front of the television and, or play the video game. But at the same time, they're sneaking in so many 
filthy things, so many immoral things inside of these games, inside of these um, animated shows, as you spoke. So it really is important to be able to take the reins and know what programming, you know, that your kids are watching to make sure that it's suitable. Amen. So um, I know we spoke yesterday. I really want you to um, really touch on um, the heart of what we were speaking on yesterday. You know, what you truly believe the Lord is, is really pressing upon you because I know you you felt like the Lord was um, showing you single mothers, but we also um, agreed that it's it's not just single mothers, but it's it's parents in general. Um, what are some of the the things that that you can speak on that um, the Lord really was was touching you on with this particular issue? Well, what the Lord was touching me on was about the single parents in general and again in the dream i saw a single mother and what really disturbed me about the dream was because sometimes a lot of times mothers they can be consumed with being a mother and they can feel like okay well i need time for me i've been raising kids for x amount of time and now i think that it's time for me you know, and it's nothing wrong with that, but in the dream, it was more targeted towards mothers who you can get a bit frustrated with your kids. And sometimes your desire to take care of yourself, you know, in, in that time, in the midst of what you're doing, can override what your children need. And so I knew the Lord was speaking to me about mothers that may make the wrong choices when it comes to dating. And mm -hmm. so sometimes you, when you date, you can have male influences over your children that don't really care about your children. And so inside of that, when you are dating a mate that doesn't care about your children, you can come to a point to where your children are being neglected because that person can want to be consumed with you. They can want your time when your kids might need you a bit more than you're able to give time. I and mean, you're not able to give that time to your kids and that person. So in, in the dream, the kids become neglected and sometimes molestation can, can come in and you have so much abuse that can be targeted at children when the adult is not present, when they don't have someone that's constantly caring for them, constantly monitoring them. And I know in my life, these are things that I have experienced growing up. You know, when my mother wasn't able to pay that attention to me that she needed to pay for me, it, there were so many things that came in as a substitute for the attention that I was lacking with my mother. And so even, you know, I, I think that when the, the adults are not paying attention to the children, they can even go outside of the home and they begin to look for influences that are not healthy. You know, and in my my life, I began to look for influences and in, in love in men. And in return, I was abused. And I, I went through so much because of what I was lacking at home. You know, and it's not to blame my mother, because she was still learning as a parent as well. But it was because of the lack of time, the lack of parenting that I went through the things that I went through. And so I think that parents need to be aware that you have to be present you know, in your child's life, not just being there, not just being in the house, but you have to take that time to care, to spend time with your children. And, um, you know, and I know that parents do have to have a life as well, but I don't think that a, a relationship that, you know, leads you to neglect your children is a healthy relationship. Amen. Um, you touched on a lot of things. And um, the first thing that I, I wanted to speak on was um, when you said that uh, mother's making the wrong decision when it comes to dating. And I think, you know, that's a, that's a big one right there because, you know, like you said, I understand that, you know, single mothers, you know, they too have a desire to, you know, become married and have that, that, uh, that family unit. And there's nothing wrong with that. But, um, it, it requires even more wisdom because it's not just you it's your children that's now involved and so when you're choosing to date 
Um, there are so many things that you have to use wisdom on when it comes to that individual that um, you bring around your kids. I know some people do have the rule where, you know, I'm not going to bring this person around my child or my children for a certain amount of time within the, the dating process. But even within that, you know, especially when it comes to uh, being a Christian, you know, you want to make sure that the person that you are dating is number one, a believer, not just someone who just says I'm a Christian, but you can see it um, in their fruits, that they truly love God. Because if they truly love God, they will respect you, they will respect your children, and they will have a lot to contribute to um, the family unit that you already have established. And so when you don't take the time out to fully investigate these individuals, you do leave your kids um, in a dangerous situation because, you know, people today can really wear a mask. And if you don't have discernment, you cannot fully see who these people are. You know, on the outside, they look to be good people. They look to be, you know, um, uh, uh, decent individuals, but you don't know um, who they really are on the inside. And sometimes that requires a lot of time to really, um, to really see who a person is. And so when you are quick to bring these people around your children, I mean, like, you know, Sister Misha said, you know, molestation can become something that you now have to um, deal with because, you know, I know personally I've been in situations where um, not just me, but just knowing of people who um, didn't know that the person that they were dating were, in fact, you know, messing with their kids. And that's such a hard thing to even go, to have to go through. I mean, it's one thing for you personally to be in that situation because I too have been in that situation. Um, I wasn't raised by my mother or my father. And so I um, was placed in foster homes. And so I know the, the dark side of what a lot of these kids are going through that are being placed in these foster homes. Um, it is a blessing when, you know, kids are, uh, placed in really good homes and it does happen, but, um, it happens more, uh, of, you know, kids being placed in foster homes that are being abused, unfortunately. And so, um, I do know that these things happen and, you know, me being a parent, I was one to make sure just because I personally gone through it, I went through it with strangers. I went through it with family members. And so because I've experienced that, I did not want my kids to be in situations where they could possibly um, have those same encounterments. So I was the type of parent that did not let my kids go to sleepovers. Now, my kids today, they still don't fully understand you know, why I went about things the way that I did, you know, leave it to them. They feel like they missed out on something. But as a, as a Christian parent, you really have to use wisdom and you have to be led by the Holy Spirit when it comes to raising your children, because the dangers that can happen um, are real and they are happening all the time. Amen. Amen. And I think also as a parent, as um, Sister Veronica mentioned, you have to use wisdom and you have to have discernment, you know, from the Lord. Because when I was a child, there were so many men that were around that were, you know, willing to abuse children. And this was seeing out of the eyes of a child, you know, not from an adult perspective. And so this is what opened my eyes to how much of it, how widespread child molestation was, you know, the, the abuse of children. It was everywhere. And so I, I understand now why my mother, when I was little, why she was a, a lot like Sister Veronica. She didn't allow us to go over people's house to spend the night. She, she made sure to keep a close 
you know, rain on us because she didn't want us to be abused. But even in that, you know, um, you, I don't want to put so much blame on parents that are taking care of their kids, that are watching their children, because even in that, things can happen. So as a parent, you do have to do your best. But I know me, when I was growing up, the, the abuse still slipped in. And I, what I want people, um, parents to be aware of is that it's not always an adult that's abusing your children. There are children out there that have been molested, that have been abused, that will befriend your children and try to abuse them too, because a lot of the times they don't know any better. Because in a situation that I was in, that's what happened to me growing up. I was abused by another child that was abused as well. So there is abuse out there lurking, again, not only under adults abusing children, but also children abusing children. And that is so true um, because I too was in a situation, you know, when I was removed from my mother's home at the age of five. And, you know, again, you know, my mom was brought up in a very dysfunctional home and she suffered um, a lot of abuse um, from uh, from a young child all the way up to the age of 18. And um, I, I don't blame my mother. And, and even to this day, it's very hard for my mother to understand how it is that I can forgive her and love her because she's still having a hard time forgiving herself. And so at a very young age, I was I was always able to understand, and I know that was the Holy Spirit, even though I didn't fully understand God, he still gave me a, a mature understanding with that to know that it really wasn't my mother's fault. Yes, she, was, she did physically abuse me, but it was learned behavior. And, you know, like what Sister Misha said, you know, when kids grow up in dysfunctional homes and they um, are dealing with whether it's physical abuse or sexual abuse, they, they act that out because that's learned behavior. That's what they know to, you know, especially when you are going through this as a child, you know, you can kind of adopt this mindset that this is normal. And so I know when I was placed in a group home, um, before I was actually adopted out into uh, an adoptive family, um, there were many kids of all ages that were there for the same reason. Either they were sexually abused or they were physically abused. And at the age of five, I encountered other females that were sexually abusing me because it was learned behavior that they too had encountered at a very young age. And so these, these situations are real. And, you know, I'm glad Sister Misha touched on this because I didn't even think to uh, talk on this, but this is so true. And, you know, I, again, I've always been the type of mother to even be very cautious of the, the kids that my, my children hung out with. And I always try to instill in them to know how to discern if a person is truly your friend or not. And so, um, you know, this just really falls in line with everything that we're saying that, you know, we have to be very discerning of the people, whether they're children or adults, um, of, you know, when it comes to allowing them to be around our children. Amen. And I just thank you for touching on the same sex abuse because that was the same abuse that I encountered by the child that was abusing me when I was young. And, you know, what was so crazy about it was that, you know, my mother, she, she did touch on, you know, when it came to abuse and things of that nature, but I was never talked to about same sex abuse. So, you know, when it happened to me, I didn't understand what was happening to me, you know, and I didn't understand if it was right. I didn't understand it if it was wrong. And so I think as parents, you know, sometimes those conversations are hard to have with your children. And sometimes you can wonder, 
you know, at what age is appropriate to have that conversation with my child. But, you know, one thing my mother did, did do when we were very young, I was about, you know, six, seven in that age range. She talked to us about those things. So I understood. However, when it comes to same sex abuse, this is something that is on the rise in these days. I mean, it was something that was always around, but when you look around us now, you see that it is on the rise and you see children that are going through sex changes and they're coming out as, um, you know, gay or whatever. And it, it's a spirit of perversion that's on the rise. And so you have to really protect your children and be aware of who your children are hanging out with, what they're being taught in school. You have to be hands on in parenting. And, you know, they've come out with a phrase lately that's called like a helicopter parent. But mm. if, if you love your child, then you're going to hover over them. You're going to make sure that what, you know, your child is safe as much as possible that they're in the right situations and the right schoolings around the right white, I'm sorry, the right people. So, you know, I, I just thank you for touching on that because this is something that we're seeing on the rise like never before. Amen. Amen. And, you know, you know, when I, when I had my firstborn, I was 19 when I gave birth to my, my oldest son. and um, I turned 20 when he was one month old. And so when I came home from the hospital, um, I remember because during my whole pregnancy, that was when I actually read the, the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation. And when I gave birth to my son and I came home to an empty place because I was on my own and I had no idea, you know, how to raise a child. Um, because I didn't have my mom growing up, and I really didn't have a mother figure um, throughout my life, but I knew that I did not want to repeat the cycles. I knew that I wanted to be a really good mother. I wanted my children to know that I loved them, and so I took being a mother seriously. Even though I did not know how to be a mother, I relied heavily on God. And so I remember I came home and I had read in the Old Testament where they would raise their firstborns up to the heavens and they would dedicate them back to God. And I did that out of faith. I didn't fully understand at the time, you know, the whole culture of why they did it. But I just knew that if I dedicated my son to God, that he was going to make sure that my son will become everything that he intended for him to be. And so I did that. And I even did it with my second son. Even though in the Bible it only stated to do it to your firstborn, I did it to both of my sons. And that was my way of showing God that I needed him. And I needed him to teach me how to be a mother. And so I was always the one with my kids to talk to them about everything. My kids to this day still just look at me like mom, really, because I talk to them about everything. I don't sugarcoat anything. I don't tiptoe around, around subjects. I'm very straightforward because I've always had an understanding that if I'm afraid to speak to them on certain things, best believe they're going to get another version somewhere else. And I wanted to always center my conversations with them where God is from God's perspective, I always wanted them to understand the principles that were lined up in the Bible. And so it's so important that, you know, we do that because as Sister Misha said, you know, there's so much out here, so much filth, so much perversion that Satan is waiting to infiltrate our children with. And, you know, God gave me revelation years ago because you know, I was still dealing with some things in my past that I was just having a really hard time overcoming. And I was hurting so deeply. And I didn't realize that everything that I had went through as a child, it was still there. And I remember one day I looked in the mirror and I just began to cry. This is probably been over, um, I would say about eight years ago. I was looking in the mirror and I just began to cry and the Lord began to speak to me so clearly. And he told me, he said, 
that little girl on the inside of you is still hurting. She has not healed yet. And see, that's the thing. We feel like just because, you know, things that we went through as a child is over and done with because we're adults. But no, just because we are now in an adult body does not mean that that little five-year-old or that little nine-year-old that went through abuse or was hurt or was neglected or abandoned, they're still there looking to you to heal them, your adult self. And so when the Lord began to show me that and show me in that perspective that that little girl on the inside of me was depending on my adult self to do what needed to be done to heal her, that's when the revelation uh, clicked in. And, you know, I understood eventually that Satan loves to allow us to go through things at a very young age because he knows the trauma that comes with that. And so you can go your whole life hurting and being traumatized and, you know, just not ever being able to move forward into your destiny, into your purpose, because you're always going to be struggling with what you went through in your younger self, as your younger self. And so that is the, that's the strategy of the enemy. He wants us to go our whole life without ever discovering who we are. And if you're always fighting and struggling with the things that was afflicted upon you, it will take you that much longer to walk into who you were destined to be. What are your feelings on that, Nisha? Oh, praise God. That is so beautifully spoken, you know. And when, when it comes to that pain that you carry from a childhood, from your childhood, the abuse, you know, as the Lord was speaking to me as you were talking, there's, you see the behavioral changes in the child as they begin to grow as a result of the pain, the abuse, the sufferings that they've been through. And I know for me, you know, as a result of the abuse, I became promiscuous. There was alcohol, there were drugs. And, um, you know, my behavior was so destructive to myself because I hated myself and I wanted to destroy myself. And so when you talked about that weapon, you know, of the devil getting that foothold while you're a child, that was the result of that to stop me from walking into my destiny, to make me hate myself because I didn't understand what was done to me was not who I was. You know, and, and I carried so much pain from what was done to me and my self-esteem was so low because I thought I was everything that was done to me. You know, I didn't understand what the Lord had put down on his, you know, the inside of me, what he, who he had destined me to be and that I was who the Lord said I was. The, the devil used that abuse to make me believe that I was worthless and that everything that happened to me was somehow my fault. So it was so many years that I struggled with that self image. And in some ways I do still struggle, but the Lord is doing his work. But there's so many years of struggling with the self image, the self esteem and not having an identity of knowing who I was in Christ, what my life was about and where I was supposed to be inside of my life. So that, you know, I, I believe that that was so important that you brought that up to say the weapons that he uses to target you and to keep you from going into your destiny, your God ordained destiny, because that is so much of what I went through. And so um, I, I just want to thank you for bringing that up. Amen. And, you know, I do believe that's why the Lord said that he's close to the, the broken hearted, because so many of us have been hurt in some kind of way. And so I think that right there um, is just an encouragement to any one of you who may be um, still uh, suffering in some kind of way of what you've gone through, or um, even if there is a teenager listening. Um, that is currently going through something, you know, I do believe that the Lord is very compassionate, you know, to those who have been afflicted because, you know, that pain is something that God feels. And we have to understand that, you know, God is just not some, some uh, God that we can't see. 
he's very much alive and he feels what we feel. You know, when we are hurting, he hurts. When we cry, I believe he cries too, because that's how deeply he loves us. And he knows that, you know, we have been um, deeply wounded in areas of our life that he desperately wants to heal us from. And so that's why it is so important for us to really um, surrender our lives to him so that he can turn our ashes into beauty. Because God allows these things for a reason. You may not fully understand the why, but know that he's allowing it for a reason. It, and it's because he know who we are. You know, we go our whole life trying to figure out who are we, but God has the answer. And the only way you're going to fully see who you truly are is when you come into alignment with God fully, because he wants you to remember. You know, when, it, when the Bible says that he knew us from our mother's womb, you know, and how he knew us before the foundations of the world, he already knew who you were going to be. He is not surprised by the, the things that we have gone through in our life, but he know what it's going to take to pull out of us what is needed so that we can walk into our true identity. And so I don't want any of us to be defeated. I don't want any of us to believe the lie of the enemy to say that you are what you've been through. No, the Bible says we are more than conquerors. And so you have to have a conqueror spirit. You have to have that spirit of victory because we are free when we are in Christ. Satan is the one who wants to keep you bound in your affliction. He wants to keep you bound in your past and what you've gone through. But that does not define who you are. God wants to use those things to make you stronger, to make you even more victorious because you have a testimony and your testimony can empower and inspire so many people around you. But you cannot be afraid to open your mouth and speak what you have gone through because somebody needs to hear it amen amen you touched on so many beautiful points and um you know i agree with everything you said you said when i was younger and i was going through everything that i was going through because of me feeling like no one was there not feeling like god was there there was a heavy sense of suicide on me and again, I would do so many things to harm myself because I just didn't want to live because I didn't feel like anybody cared about me, you know, and um, as you talked about that surrender, it wasn't until I got to that place of surrender where I was able to yield to the voice of the Lord, where he started to deal with me on how much he loves me and, um, you know, how to come out of this mindset and to bring deliverance into my life. But it wasn't an, until that point where I was able to listen to the voice because I think sometimes even when we're in the world we can sometimes hear that still small voice but we might may not know that it's the Lord talking you know when he's trying to tell you which way to go how to come out of certain things I wasn't able to listen to that voice until I got to the point where I was just completely tired where I had made a, a just complete mess of my life and I couldn't clean it up it was nothing that I could do to rebuild myself I was at the end of myself and when I got to that point, that's when I was able to listen to the Lord to where and, you know, pay that attention to him so he can start doing the work on me. So my heart goes out to the children because sometimes their voices are unheard. Sometimes they can be silenced. And, you know, it can seem that you're in a place to where nobody understands you. No, there's no one that you can talk to because, I, you know, I'm a witness when you're out in the streets and you're vulnerable and you're broken, sometimes you can reach out to people and people end up using you further. I'm a witness to that, you know, and there was no one as a child that I was able to speak to that was going to help me come out of what I was going to. They didn't direct me in the correct path. And, you know, I didn't know how to go to Jesus. I didn't understand how to have that relationship with him. So because of that, as a result of that, I was being used by people that, that I was looking for, you know, to for a hand, looking to for help. They used and they, they abused me even further. So as a parent, you know, you have to, in all things, give your children to the Lord, as Sister Veronica mentioned. You have to give your children to the Lord, but you have to be there for your children. 
you have to get to a point to where you have an open communication with your children to where they feel that they can come to you and they can tell you anything without a penalty, without them, you know, being harmed for telling you what they're going through. So I think that that's a very important point to bring up. Amen. I agree. And, you know, just overall, you know, I really hope and pray that, you know, any of you that, um, you know, is, is trying to figure out how to move forward in your life from what you've gone through. You know, I pray that this program blesses you and help you to make the necessary steps to that freedom because, you know, again, you are not weak because you went through these situations, you know, and, you know, this is just, one of the tactics of the enemy because we are so hated by him. You know, we are God's creation and Satan hates God, therefore he hates us. And so what you've gone through does not make you weak by any means, but let the Lord use what you went through to make you who you are destined to be. Because I do believe a lot of people are hurting in silence and they don't know where to go. They don't know who to trust. Um, and some people just feel like no one will understand. And, you know, that's what the enemy loves. He loves to isolate you. And so when you're isolated, he can continually manipulate your mind and manipulate your thoughts and um, just cause you to not really move forward in your life because you're so stagnant in what you're going through and what you've gone through. And so I just hope that this has blessed you all in some kind of way. And, um, but everything that, that was said in this show, um, I truly believe that this is what the, the Lord is wanting us to understand and wanting us to fully grab hold of because he wants us to be whole and we cannot become whole until we heal in those areas that that we have been deeply wounded in. And so, um, Sister Misha, since this was something that was really, really close to your heart, do you have any last and final words for the viewers? Yes, I just want to say this. You know, the Lord came and told me, he said that, you know, in this generation, I am raising up the children. And the children are going to be warriors for Christ. And so the children are going through fiery trials because the Lord is making them into what it is that he would have them to do. And when I say that the Lord is making them, he's, there are going to be powerful things that we're going to see come out of the children. And so a lot of the attacks that the adults are facing is because of the call that's on the lives of them and their children. So not all of your war, warfare is because of you. The devil was after your children. So, you know, what the Lord is saying to me is prepare your children. He told me when they are babies, teach them spiritual warfare. Don't wait until they're grown to give them the weapons and the tools that they need to pull down those strongholds of the enemy that's coming against their lives. And that's all that I wanted to say. Amen. So parents, pray for your children. Continually pray for your children um, because we have to keep them covered at all times. So again, we thank you. We love you. We appreciate you for taking the time out to listen to another segment of Sister Talk. And um, also, I just want to remind you all, if you have any topics of uh, uh, conversation that you would like for us to speak on, please make sure to leave those comments, those suggestions in the comment section below. And we will definitely revisit those um, and see what we can do. Um, but as always, we just want to thank you for your support. And stay tuned to the next segment of Sister Talk. It's Sister Talk with Veronica.